Hello everyone, welcome to our Wednesday night service. I'm honored to be with you and I'm thrilled that you would allow me to spend time with you this evening. You know, um, we have begun having church um, on site last Sunday in the building and it was quite nice, to be honest with you, to have a good group of people who desire to be together, to worship the Lord together, to spend time around the Word together and uh, it's been really enjoyable to have it outside or inside so we want to make sure that you know that you're welcome to come. We can't wait for you to feel comfortable or just to know that we're having church on Sunday mornings. Right now we are still having Wednesday night services online. I just think that it's convenient that once a week is probably good for us right now. So again, thank you for being a part of our service this evening. Let's take a moment and pray and then we're going to go right into worship. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for my dear friends who choose to be a part of the worship of Jesus right now. And I ask you to bless them. Fill their homes with your presence. Touch their bodies. Deliver them from any fear, anxiety, over care of anything. And just give them a great evening. And thank you for their friendship. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, see you in a moment. Enjoy the worship. That you have shown to me Your faithful presence Never leaves Your mercy is new each day You never give up on me Reaching your hand out to rescue me How great is your faithfulness that you have shown to me your faithful presence never leaves your mercy is new each day you never give up on me Reaching your hand out to rescue me Faithful to me, you are. 
faithful, yes you are, you are faithful, a faithful God, your love is my song and I will sing, faithful God to me. My rescue life is my gift to you, faithful God to me. Hi guys, welcome back. Guess what time it is? It's offering time. And we're thrilled to have this opportunity to just share with you the uniqueness of this time. You know, many times we forget how spiritual our giving is, but, but giving really is spiritual because it keeps my heart connected to God. I mean, Father God so loved the world, the Bible tells us that he gave us Jesus. And then Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. So we find this beautiful sentiment of giving that comes from the Father. Love just keeps giving. And so in order to express our love, giving is a part of that. So if you can find it in your heart to be a financial backer, a contributor to Thibodeau Family Church, follow the prompts be a part of the giving uh, team tonight, and uh, we're so grateful. Thank you so much. We'll see you when we get finished with the giving part. Hello everyone, welcome back to Word Time. It's time to get into the Word of God. And again, it's, I mean, I can't express to you how much we love you guys. We do this this work because we love Jesus and we love you. And so again, welcome to Midweek Refilling. We have been talking this whole time of our midweek services recently about developing a strong spirit. And our, our foundation of developing a strong spirit comes out of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. And this particular reading will come out of the Amplified Bible where it says that the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. So we find here that a strong spirit, when I, when I think of the term sustains you, it, it, in other words, it strengthens me to overcome. Whether my body's in pain or I'm in any form of trouble in life, and I have, I have, think I have proven to myself that this is true. That the more that I am really strong in spirit, the more faith is alive, and the easier it is to overcome and to get by things. I know. Just recently, I've had a couple moments in my life where I just woke up with a twinge or a funny feeling. And of course, you know how the enemy is. He comes in, he starts shooting fiery darts and makes you think of all kind of stuff. But I had to really focus my mind and sustain my spirit and direct it in the way of the Lord and make sure that my spirit was in line with God. That's a part of being a strong, being a man of a strong spirit. And so I began to quote the word and meditate on the word, think of the word. And then the more that if that thing started showing up again, I'd just exercise the word more. And then I would get out there and I'd actually do physical exercise. I'd go ride my bike. I'd drink a lot of water and make sure that I was doing the proper things. But here the word says that 
uh, spiritual exercise is more profitable so that the strong spirit sustains you whether you're in pain or in trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear it? And as we've said in the past, thank God Jesus does. Amen. Praise the Lord that Jesus sustains us and lifts us up. So today, if you find it in any way that you are weak in spirit, just confess it before the Lord. He loves you. He won't whip you. No, he's there to sustain you and to lift you up and to raise you up. So come underneath the Lordship of Jesus. And so here's some things we want to go through, a little reminder, and then we're going to go through two points real quickly on how do you identify if you have a weak spirit. So there's no limit to our capacity, our capability of developing a strong spirit. I mean, you can become as strong as you desire. You know, I can remember as a young man uh, just having a desire not to be frail and skinny. I wanted to play sports, so I set myself on a regimen of running and eating properly and trying to gain weight by eating, you know, doing protein and all kind of stuff like that. And I did, I, I, I gained weight and I put on a lot of muscle mass in, in those early days. Now, I always tell my children, we've always had fun with this. I still have my six pack, but it's just underneath my coat. So, um, it's just a little joke we have inside, but I think most of you, as you age, you realize that what was once there still there has just been hidden. But in the context of your spirituality, there's really no limit to how strong you can become. I mean, the more you fall in love with Jesus and the more you chase after his presence, the more he'll sustain you and the more you get revelation. And I want to make it my prayer as I pray for you as well. Lord God, help us to become more infatuated with Jesus, that he is all that we have need of. He's more than enough. So the spirit of a man is the life of a man. And it's just vital that we continue to work on this. The life that is in your body comes from your spirit. And so the life that is in your spirit comes from God. Do you remember those thoughts? Now, this is your first time to see it. You can go back and look at some of our Wednesday night services and catch up. Proverbs 20 verse 27 says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. So now that we can see that the work of the Lord is done through the spirit of man. And so that's why it's very important that we keep our spirit underneath the headship of Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of effort in most people's lives at least to develop a strong body our strong mind. So we spend a lot of time in education classes, developing the strength of our mind. We do a lot of exercise in our physical body to maintain a healthy body. But how much time do we really spend in developing the heart within my life? And I think that if there's anything that we should all put effort into, it's the development of the spirit. So Proverbs 4 verses 20 um, through 23, it's a summary, but you can find this, that if you keep and protect your heart, out of it will flow, out of your spirit will flow, the very issues, the life forces, and the springs of life. So go back and read Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 23, and you're going to find that if you guard, protect, which means I'm building up my spirit, out of your spirit, that this is now the engine. It's the, it's the force of life coming out of you. I've always tried to portray this to you, that if we feed our spirit, it's the fuel of our spirit. And so when I do that with more fuel and the strength of my spirit, now the issues of life that flow from God flow out of my spirit. Because remember, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It's how we find our way in life. So if you want life issues to flow, if you want springs of life to flow, we develop a strong spirit. For they are the forces that sustain you and they're the standard that feeds our spirit. So your spirit is the generator or the power plant of the life source within you. So here's two more points that we've built on and we want to continue to think about. If you find yourself fearful, then your dashboard in life is beginning to blink. It's giving you an indicator you need spiritual attention. So when I panic very easily or become worried, which means I'm anxious, I need to work in that area. Now, I have to admit to you guys, I've spent a large portion of my life dealing with the fear of death. That fear came on me as a young man when my cousin 
was killed in an automobile accident as a young man and that really shook my world because I was under the impression that my life could end very shortly. So I dealt with and even took it into adulthood dealing with the fear of death and I want to tell you something, it's not fun. So I can tell you though that when I have now worked on feeding my spirit, diving into the scriptures, exercising the things that I share with you, I don't deal with that very often. Now, it wants to surface its head every now and then, and that feeling and those thoughts come. But I'm telling you, when you take the Word of God that you've hid in your life, and you begin to, and you've stored it up in that generator, so to speak, and you begin to now preserve it and get ready, and when that attack comes or those feelings come, man, you that engine fires up, and all of a sudden the forces of life start coming out of you, and then you get big and you go global and start praying for everybody who's dealing with the same stuff. I'm telling you, something happens, that thing will lift off of you and freedom comes. Now, Job chapter 4 verse 5 says, now this is the New Living Translation, but now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. So now we find that when trouble strikes, if you lose heart, that ought to be an indicator that you need spiritual attention and you become terrified when that trouble touches you. And that's something that Many people in our generation and globally, like our generation globally, have dealt with with the coronavirus. And I'm listen, all of us have to deal with the same fear factors, the same fiery darts that come from the enemy, that if you're not careful, these things will strike you, they'll hit your heart, and then before you know it, you'll be terrified and you won't ever get out your house again. And you know that ain't healthy, so you've got to deal with it spiritually. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given you the spirit of fear. God has not done this to you. But, but God has given you power, and He's given you love, and He's given you a sound mind. Praise God. What a great thought process, a great God we serve to know that to think about, to be able to put into action that power, love, and a sound mind is a gift of God to me, not fear. So you can't give into doubt and unbelief if you're going to walk in victory. You've got to fight for victory. You've got to excuse me, sustain victory. So the stronger you are, the more fear-free you will live your life. Now, the the final thing that we want to talk about in this series of developing a strong spirit that's an indicator of a weak spirit is that you're exhausted and tired all the time. You become weary, stressed out, just drained. You know, you just never, there's no energy, all right? You need to resist sin and resist that temptation and receive from God and receive from others. Listen, when people encourage you to get moving, you need to get moving. When people tell you to eat right, you need to eat right. If you you just need to listen to the Spirit of God, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 says, Therefore, since we do hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not get discouraged. You understand that? We do not get discouraged since we have engaged in the ministry of mercy. Praise the Lord spiritless and despondent with fear. That's what discouragement is. Spiritless and despondent with fear or become faint or weary with exhaustion. We don't do that. So we've got to resist being exhausted or weary. So the stronger your spirit is, the more of the blessing of God you will experience. Now, let's shake, let's, let's shift over now to our character traits. If we're going to develop a strong spirit, then we have to know what to work on. Well, let's work on now being reconciled in the area of um, relationships. I know this is not always an easy topic to deal with, but the character trait that we're dealing with is responsibility versus unreliability. We want to be reliable and responsible, but do you understand that if you are unreliable, then there will be no healthy relationships in your life. So we're going to talk today about being reconciled. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24 says this, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there you remember thy brother has ought against thee, leave the gift at the altar, go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Now in my life recently, I have had uh, this scripture come alive to me where I was instructed by the Lord that I knew that there were relationships that were strained just because of me. 
And my goal was, because I asked the Lord, I said, where is my worship? My worship wasn't where it once was. And I felt like the Lord showed me that my worship had been lost because I didn't find value in the people that I allowed to walk away from me. So then at that point, I made an effort to go back to leave my gift at the altar and to do my best to reconcile my relationships. Here's the beautiful thing. My worship came back when I obeyed this word. And you say, well, Pastor, what do you mean by your worship returned? Well, it was just the sense of sensing his presence, eager to go into his presence and to sing and to worship and to give thanks. At one point, I just felt so dry. And so here, Jesus says, if you do these things, you can come back now and worship. So I've discovered that this is true. So we apparently we just had a little power blink, but I want you to stay with me now. So the definition now of reconciliation is to change thoroughly. Oh, we got power back. Praise God. Man, listen, that's the purpose of having a strong spirit because if the power goes out, you're able to come back to life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, you want to keep things cool in your in your family life. But here the definition of reconciliation is to change thoroughly. You could be in a position where you don't respect a certain person, but you can change that. You can change it thoroughly by keeping your heart set on the master. You can return to favor with that person. Praise God. Come on, think about that. You can have favor once again, and you can bring back this relationship into harmony. Now, you may not want to right now, but listen, if you're going to follow Jesus and you're going to have a strong spirit, you've got to do these things. If not, you're just never going to fulfill your full destiny. So restoration, reconciliation involves restoring relationships that have been severed. Now, severing could happen because of misunderstandings, disagreements, but all of those are all rudiments that are roots that come out of the, really the dark world of an enemy. So instead of having it your way, let's have it Jesus's way. So here's some general observations about the kingdom of God, about kingdom qualities, about responsibility. This commandment to reconcile follows a discussion on anger. So in other words, if you go back and we will read this in Matthew 5 verse 21 through 22, and we just read verses 23 through 24, it hinges on, the heart hinges on reconciliation, but, it, but the reconciliation was necessary because anger was the root of it. So here's what it says. You have heard that it was said by them of old, thou shalt not kill, but whoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever shall call his brother Raka shall be in danger of counsel. And whoever shall say um, thou fool shall be in danger of hell in his fires. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a part of any of that stuff. So here's something that we have to recognize is that reconciliation, according to the scripture, begins with recognizing that I have an anger issue when it comes to this particular person. And reconciliation requires three major factors that I recognize whether or not I'm walking in pride, why am I angry, and why am I willing to cut this person off out of my life? In other words, God put this person in my life. Now, why am I willing to cut them off of my life? So pride is revealed when you belittle people with words. So if, you're, if you have a tendency to belittle those around you, you got a pride issue. And Jesus discusses verbal abuse. Scripture makes it clear that murder does not only come by weapons, but it also comes by words. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So the term that we read earlier about raka and the word fool, raka means that you are saying that that person is empty-headed. In other words, you call them stupid. You call them ignorant. You, you know all the words that would relate to you not respecting the intelligence of a person. The term fool just means similar, that they're dull and you think they're no more than a blockhead. So the, both of these terms are really based in the spirit of pride and arrogance. Uh, I think I'm better than you. 
And so you take on this spirit that's just arrogant, just put people down. Now, Proverbs 13, verse 10 says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well of advice is wisdom. So we always want to find ourselves in wisdom. But here it says that pride cometh because of contention. So pride leads to anger. Pride is putting yourself above others with, and, and as, a re, as a result, you react in anger when anyone disagrees with your position. So if people disagree with you, you get angry. And listen, every one of us has that opportunity to get mad and angry instead of sitting back and listening to the wise counsel that perhaps your friend, your wife, your husband, your children have a better solution than you do with a better answer. But instead of getting angry, we should listen. So Ecclesiastes 7, 9 says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. So if you're angry, the word says we're fools. Now, I don't believe any of us want to be a fool. Now, the only person you understand who has a right to call somebody a fool is God because he's instructing us what it is to be a fool. But we don't have the right to call somebody a fool. But God says, if you do these things, you're a fool. Well, we don't want to be that. So Proverbs 18, 6 says, A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. So you see, the mouth leads to contention, but the mouth also calls for pain. You, because of your arrogance, you want them to pay for something. So we have to get away from that. Now remember, this is an indicator that we need a strong spirit. So I'm here to advise you, if you're dealing with any of this stuff, we need to humble ourselves before Jesus and recognize, I need help. And what do I do if I need help? Well, I'm going to tell you what I do. When I recognize I'm struggling in life, I simply bow my knee, well, I say my knee, my heart, my, my, my head. I just bow my life before Jesus and I confess, Lord, I'm mad. And I don't know why I'm mad, but I'm mad right now and I shouldn't be. And I ask you to help me. So I put my anger underneath your Lordship. I give you my heart again. And in that moment, I want to tell you something. When you do that, man, Jesus will change your heart condition. In other words, he is the great physician. He'll go into heart surgery. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So today, as we've gone through this lesson, I want you to remember that if you are fearful, exhausted, now think about it, fearful in life is not good. Exhausted can cause you to have problems in relationships as well as fear. So in any area of your life in relationships that you have severed relationships, the word of the Lord says to have a strong spirit, you've got to go and reconcile. So let's pray about that, please. Let's take a moment. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we confess that we have cut ourselves off from a lot of people that you've called us to be in partnership with. We're asking you to change our hearts and bring us back into the fold of partnership with our friends. Father, in Jesus' name, we need help. And we receive that help and we decree in Jesus' name that we're going to be people of a strong spirit and we're going to shine your light all over this land. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, take a moment and pray with me. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I confess that Jesus is Lord of all. I bow my life before him. I give him the reign of my heart. And today I receive his lordship over my entire life reign in life, Jesus, in my life. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you're born again today and made Jesus the Lord of your life, you need a good church. And I'm glad you're part of Thibodeau Family Church. But I really want you to get over your fear, anxiety, and concern, and come to church and partner up with us. Now, if you can't get there, I understand we're still going to have online services for you. But we want you to help us also grow this church online and help us by spreading the word connecting with people, sharing the messages, and being a positive influence on those around you. And what will happen is you'll help us grow an online community church, and that would be wonderful for all of us. So guys, we want to tell you something. We love you. We appreciate your friendship, and thank you for being with us tonight. And don't forget, if you can join us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, 
We'll be at church, ready to worship the Lord, but we'll also be online. And this Sunday will be our first time. We're going to make a big leap of faith to have it on Facebook Live. You'll see the whole church service. It'll be live on Facebook Live. So look for us at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Guys, love you. Have a great day and shine your light for Jesus. Bye-bye.